Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Charlotte Canyon. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Privileged to be interviewing Dr. Sherry Fisher today. Now, after leaving the pharmacy industry, she followed her passion of writing. Welcome to the show, Sherry. Thank you, Charlotte. It's great to be here. Let me ask you before we kind of dig into your writing, give us a little of your background and, you know, where you went to school and where you're from and your family. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I went to school at the University of Pittsburgh. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in pharmacy. I have an honorary uh, doctor in pharmacy from Oklahoma, and I was a practicing pharmacist for about 25 years in the front line. And then I went into uh, the PBM business, and I retired as an executive in a Fortune 12 company, um, running their retrospective clinical programs. My goodness, you've got a quite quite a background. When did you decide to you know start writing, or what triggered that? Truthfully, it was when my father took ill and I needed a way to channel my pain and my grief. I'm daddy's little girl, so it was really hard for me to accept the fact that he was aging and wasn't going to be with me forever. And I just started writing a story and it blossom from there. I found writing was a perfect way for me to channel emotions and to really express some of the things I was feeling uh, by putting them on paper. Well, and while putting them on paper, you probably, I mean, you know, we all know that we each other share each other's journeys. So you probably were helping other people express their feelings while you were expressing yours. Well, I hope so. Um, my, my first book is uh, full of intense emotions. And of course, there's a strong female protagonist. It, it, I can't help but uh, be favorite to uh, my strong female characters. Now, is that the, a mystery of grace? Yes, it is. Now, are, now, I noticed one of your taglines was pharmacy to fiction. Did you yes. kind of go off into a little fiction when you wrote, your, wrote, that, wrote Mystery of Grace? A Mystery of Grace is women's lit. It's totally fiction. Uh, I, I took my, my main male character is actually an amalgamation of maybe five or six men that I've had the displeasure of knowing <laughs> throughout my life. And it was kind of a way not only to channel pain from my father's illness, but uh, do a little knife stabbing on the way and get back at some of these male characters that I didn't think played fairly. Ah, now can you share a little bit about some of the characters? You said you, you can collaborated, you know, the men. They're, they're all fictional characters. The only thing that is real about the book is it's set in the 1950s, which is when my parents would have been young people. So that's the only thing that is uh, real. And the setting is a small town in Western Pennsylvania, and that's where I grew up in a small town in Western Pennsylvania. So that's where the truth ends, and the book is where fiction begins. Perfect. Do you have any siblings in the family that are writers? 
I do. I have one sister. She has written, I think she has published two or three uh, fictional uh, works and she's working on a, a follow-up story right now. And her name is Deborah Williams. Now, does she still live in Pennsylvania? No, she she lives in Texas. Uh, well, actually, she's in North Carolina now, but she lived in Texas her entire life. Oh, and God. I um, was telling Alan, I now live in Florida. I'm a full-time Florida resident. I was a snowbird for about 12 years. My husband's slightly older than I, so I let him retire and come to Florida in the winter. I kept my corporate career and I flew back and forth whenever I could. Well, that sounds like an exciting life. Do you have any children? I have a stepdaughter who is quite adult and uh, three adult grandchildren. And they're all in Pennsylvania. Now, I know that, that I, as an author, and I know a lot of other authors, they do kind of take um, sometimes stories from their life or sometimes, you know, characteristics from family members or good friends or people that they like. And you don't have to name names because I don't want you to hang anybody. But, you know, did you, did you use uh, things like that in your book? I did. There was one character that I can tell you it uh, is loosely based on my maternal grandmother. She um, she's quite she was quite a character. She's been long gone, so no no one uh, will be insulted. Uh, but. Uh, she she was one tough cookie, and my character Olive is based on my maternal grandmother, and she's one of these characters that you just absolutely love to hate. Gotcha. You know, we all have those characters in our life that are hard. My dad was a Marine, so I had, you know, a hard upbringing, but he molded who I am today. So I'm sure you carry a lot of your grandmother's characteristics or at least some of the good ones that, you know, that she would want you to have. I bet you she'd be smiling down on you that you used her as a character in your book. She might, she's vain enough to want me to use her as a character, <laughs> but I don't know that she'd be smiling that I used her for this character. <laughs> Oh, I understand how that how that is. And yeah, minor people I wrote about are all all deceased myself. But it but sometimes it's characters in books people relate to. So you know, especially you mentioned earlier that you related on men, you know, that that had done you wrong or were a little, you know, little. They weren't somebody to take home to mom. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> exactly. Uh, not only were they not what you would take home to mom, um, my, my main male character is a real womanizer, and several of these men just did not know how to treat women. They, um, and I had one of my good friends tell me that she gave this book, even though it's basically women's lit, she gave it to her son, her teenage son, and said, read this book. This is how not to treat a woman. <laughs> That's a very good endorsement there. Very, very good endorsement. Um, now, was this your very first writing, or had you written short stories or anything you know, prior to this? Uh, I was published twice prior to the release of this book. One was in a trade magazine back in 1992. Uh, I did an editorial piece, and then the other uh, was published in 
a Pennsylvania Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, their monthly magazine. I'm a member of DAR and I had uh, written an article for a course that I was mm -hmm. taking and my um, course coordinator suggested that I submit it for publication and it was accepted and published. Well, congratulations. Well, Sherry, we're going to have to take a break here. Our sponsors need to do their thing. So we'll be right back. Do you send book sales to a company that takes most of your money? Want to earn more money from your book sales? Do you want a bookstore that supports you? Introducing a new bookstore for indie authors and small press, B4R.store. Earn up to 80% of your book sales and learn how to market yourself, B4R.store. Join us for the 6th Annual Authors Marketing Event in Granbury, Texas on July 23rd to the 25th, 2021, where authors share ideas and learn from the professionals over a two-day weekend. Receive your book marketing certification from the only organization in the world that has been doing it for five years, Authors Marketing Guild, a membership-based organization that supports authors from around the world. Learn more at ame.authorsmarketingguild.com. Sponsored by IndieLector.store, a bookstore that pays authors their fair share. Hello, I am the author and poet Denise Bryson. I am the author of The Things That Cross My Mind, Love's Reality, both in book and audio form. I am also noted as one of the best poets of 2011. I have two new projects coming up. One is the Blinky series, where Blinky tells us all about our coins and our bills for our children. I also have a book coming out called Say Ye. It's quotes from Denise Bryson. Just inspirational and that will help you along the way. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Hi, this is Charlotte Canyon, your host, and we're speaking with Dr. Sherry Fisher, and she has a fascinating story how she went from pharmacy to fiction. Now, Sh Sherry, let me ask you this. When, when you were writing your story, um, and I've read a little bit of it, did you, um, did you use cities and places that you'd been? Uh, and I know you, you said it was, it was staged like in the 50s? Yes. I did use, um, I, I had some Western Pennsylvania towns in mind, and the places in the book are not a specific town, but maybe a mixture of several d different uh, small villages and small cities that I was familiar with in Western Pennsylvania. And the countryside is very much the countryside of Western Pennsylvania. Well, Pennsylvania has a lot of history, so I'm sure that you've seen a lot, lot of history up there. It does, it does. And it, it's, it's amazing, the little area in which I grew up is really steeped with history with George Washington and um, prior to the Revolutionary War and so many of the families in the area have ancestors that actually fought in the Revolutionary War. It is, it's not uncommon to um, have a friend that goes back to clone that the family originates in clone times. Well, now how many generations does your book cover? Does it just cover one generation or do you overlap? The book actually covers three generations. So it is sort of a family saga, but I do give a little bit, um, I really shouldn't have done it, but it's a little bit of a data dump um, to give the 
background of this area in colonial times, because I wanted the reader to know how mm -hmm. steep in history the area actually is. So um, three generations are covered in the book. The middle generation is the predominant are the predominant characters, but certainly the generation prior and their, their daughter is a significant character in the book. Well, how many characters are there actually in your book? Uh, I'm talking about primary characters. And, and give us a little of their personalities. Well, Eddie Kepler is my main male character. He's a cad and a womanizer. And he's the one that does not know how to treat ladies. He's selfish, uh, very attractive, charming, thinks he can get away with anything and then just smile his way through it. Harriet is his wife, who is the main female character. She's very bright. She gets her PhD in uh, finance and she works as a CFO of a small company. They have a daughter, Shelby, who is a psychiatrist, uh, a geriatric psychiatrist. Um, Harriet's mother is the infamous Olive who is based loosely on my grandmother. And then her father, Tobias, is just a wonderful, nurturing, uh, simple man, simple country man. And then Eddie's parents are predominant. And uh, there is another female character that Eddie winds up with when he serves in the Korean War. We do have the Korean War in the background. And that's his other main love interest, or actually the only real love of his life, and that's Rosa. You said you included the Korean War. Do you go into much of the war aspects, or like you said, they, they stay in the background? I do have a few scenes that uh, take place actually in combat, but I do a lot on base. Eddie was, uh, I'm forgetting the word, he, he was stationed in Trieste, Italy. And at the same time, uh, when the Koreans were crossing the 34th parallel, we had uh, Trieste as a hot spot. And the UN set in Canadian and American troops to keep the peace. The, uh, the Yugoslavians and the Italians were fighting over Trieste. So Eddie's military career mostly takes place in Trieste, Italy, which is on Adriatic and a beautiful, beautiful city. Oh, yeah, the Adriatic Sea and all, all that area is really beautiful. And I'm sure you do some descriptives on it. The reason I ask you about the war is because, you know, you said it's a woman's book, but you know, there's a lot of men in there fascinated with war, so I wanted to I intrigue them to, you know, look into your book as well. Thank you. I have had uh, men say this is not just for women. And that's a good thing. You know, you could put it in two different, two different areas. Now, do you, are you writing, are you doing any more writing after this? Do you have a sequel to it or? I do. Actually. I'm having a deep dive on this storyline. It's going to be a four book series. The first in the series is called Becoming All of W. So it's all about that character, all of that's loosely based on my grandmother from the time she's a feisty toddler to late teens, early adulthood, 
<laughs> when she turns into a very, very bitter woman. So I'm giving the reader more of a deep dive on all of them and why all of them is the way she is. And then the other three books will follow and really go into depth in this story, the same storyline. And Becoming All of W will be up out with the elections and the holidays, I'm going to publish at the beginning of 2021. Yeah. Now you said you're you're deep diving. We we all know that rural America was prior to the fifties. Do you back up and go into some of the rural America and, and talk about that era? I do. We we start in nineteen oh five in becoming awful. So I actually introduced modernization into the farms. Um I, I talk about how they convert from gas to electric in the introduction of the automobiles and telephones and things like that, that children today just take for granted. They have no idea that it was just a little over a hundred years ago when all of that was introduced to our lifestyle. So I, I do a lot of historical research. That's really good. I, I tell my, I have 20 grandchildren and I tell them that TVs weren't invented when I was born and they just have a hard time, you know, understanding that. And technology has been like a snowball going, you know, going downhill. But, but it's fascinating. I'm fascinated with all the things that have been invented in the last hundred and, or maybe 120 years. It's just amazing. You know, if you think back, and I was going to admit you were talking about telephones, party lines, right. you know, right. yeah, everybody was on a party line. And I think that's where gossip really got its start. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's, it's that's, I digressed a little bit there. Um, now, you said that your, each of your sequel books will be diving into each of your main characters. Is that correct? Uh, uh, it's actually a deep dive into the story. So I will tell the story more in depth. The, uh, the original, uh, it, it will be called uh, A Mystery of Grace Family Saga. So I'll have book one, book two, book three, book four of this family saga. Of course, each novel will have its own independent title. But uh, the second book will be um, an in-depth story of Harriet and Eddie. The third book will be Eddie and Rosa. And the fourth book will be how Eddie and Shelby kind of bring him to closure. Well, Sherry, hang on. We're going to let our sponsors come back and have a few commercials. Come back and you can find out how you can get her books and where you can find a place to talk to her. World War II, the Holocaust and a mysterious package arrives in New York from Germany 40 years after the war, involving three families across the oceans. Mystery, intrigue, and correcting the most heinous of wrongs. This is just part of the story Michael Newman tells in his book, Between These Walls. Available in Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or at IndieLector.store. Buy it today and enjoy this thriller of a novel. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. 
Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Welcome back. This is your host, Charlotte Canyon, and we're speaking with Dr. Sherry Fisher. He has a fascinating story to tell. Her book is called The Mystery of Grace, and she's going to have many, many sequels. Now, we've only got a few minutes left, so I'm going to ask Sherry to tell us where her book is at and where they can find her new books and when it's going to be released, and also maybe her website. You might want to go there and check out her information. My website is sleefisher.com. So www s Lee, L E E, Fisher, F I S H E R dot com. My books are available from Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles, any place you can order books. You can order A Mystery of Grace. Um, of course, Amazon is usually a prime site, but they are available. Uh, to be ordered through your independent store also. Uh, I am active on Facebook and Twitter, and my um, Facebook account is S. Lee Fisher. My Twitter account is at Progar Sherry. Progar is actually my maiden name. So I am really Dr. Progar, but writer, Esley Fisher. Fisher is my maiden name. And I told my husband I was not giving him credit for the talent that came <laughs> from my parents. <laughs> oh, that is, that is cute. Now, do you go out and do book signings? I do. I had several wonderful book signings before COVID. Uh, things have come to have stopped. Uh, with COVID, but I would like to do some more once we get back into um, more of a normal lifestyle. I've done book signings, I've done readings, uh, um, little wine and cheese parties. I'll, uh, if you have a, a book club and you would like me to Zoom in or Skype in, have the author present, I'm more than willing to participate. Just go to my website. There's a place to sign up for my newsletter. I have a monthly newsletter and a monthly blog, and you can email me directly through my website. Why don't you give your website one more time? My website is www.slee. L E E Fisher F I S H E R dot com. Well, Sherry, this has been such a pleasure, and I, I do definitely think your book is a crossover book uh, because I think men would enjoy it as well from what you said during this interview. And I can't wait to get it at my hands on it. I have one last question. The pearls on the book, do they have something to do with your grandma? No, but they have something to do with the book. They do have something to do with the book. Okay. They, they just intrigued me because I have my grandmother's pearls. And I thought they probably had something to do, you know, with the book. I have my mother's pearls, but these, uh, these pearls are definitely significant to the story. And that's, that's important. And I'm glad to know that pearls are coming back. Yes, me too. Yeah. Sherry, it has been a pleasure talking to you. And I've enjoyed everything you've had to say about your book. I, I, like I say, I can't wait for myself. And I hope the readers will go out and get your book. And this is Charlotte Canyon. And I have one thing for you to remember. That a rose is like a book. You can't know its beauty until you look at it. And a book is like a rose. You won't know its full beauty until you open it. 
This is Charlotte saying stay safe and bye for now. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with host is Charlotte Cannon. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by B. Allen Bourgeois for authors Mark and Guild LLC, copyright 2020. Voice over by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and B. Allen Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music always rejoiced by Ram Cord.